This is Divorce, Happy, and Successful, the number one spiritually focused self-empowerment podcast for divorced parents that's dedicated to helping you live the fulfilling life you deserve and experience the happiness you long for. Let's get into today's show with our host, W. Mark Watts. Hey, everybody, it's W. Mark Watts, and I want to thank you for coming and hanging out with me for another episode of the podcast. And you know how I like to do it, like to get right on into it so that we take full advantage of our time together here. Today is going to be the exact same thing. The topic for today is how to regain your self-confidence or how to build your own self-confidence because it's important because after your divorce, there's a lot of things that can bring you down. And oftentimes those people that are nearest and closest to us and have the most influence with us can say mean things, you know, i.e. your former spouse, i.e. Uh, co-workers, i.e. family members, whether they be your family members or the former spouse's family members, anyone intimately involved in the whole situation. And a lot of times we can take that stuff very personally and it can start to wear on us. And we until the point where we start to believe what they say and it really affects us and really lowers our self-confidence. So just how do we reverse that cycle? What do we do in that situation? Now, uh, just you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest with you. My self-confidence was definitely low after my divorce, you know, for various reasons. One of them being related to my my um, my divorce, because, you know, people do say things, you know, I, I won't name names, but. There was, you know, definitely questions uh, about after my divorce. I mean, so much so that a, a certain person, you know, questioned my sexuality, you know. So people, when a divorce occurs, people will say strange things and they'll do strange things. And, you know, everything's on the table when someone's when people's emotions are involved. So you've got to just be. You got to understand that, man, crazy stuff can happen. So you got to be careful. You got to guard yourself. But, you know, having said that, you know, once uh, once, the, you know, everything's finalized and, and you're moving on and you got to realize, and, you know, you start to realize and recognize that you are having trouble. You know, you, you're not as comfortable. You know, you don't have that that firm foundation. You know, you're you're not sure, you, you know, making decisions becomes more of a task than maybe it used to be. Just what do you do? So I'm going to be real brief in this episode because this one could really go on and on for, you know, quite some time. And maybe I'll address it again later date. But I'm going to give you two things today that I know for a fact will help you because they've helped me. They've helped other people. I've helped other people with this and I'm just going to share them today. And I just want you to take them, play around with them a little bit. Think about it. See what see if it might help you at all. And then, you know, just go from there. So first thing is you might not think of this, but if you're struggling with your own self-confidence, go borrow self-confidence from someone else. So what does that mean, Mark? What that means is. Find someone or a group of people or various people who have self-confidence, who you know for a no 100 percent certainty that these people are self-confident, that they make decisions, that they don't let everything affect them, that they're, you know, they're their own person. Find some people like that and just hang around them. That's all you got to do is just hang around them. Why? Because what happens is the people that we hang around, the things that we constantly watch, the music that we listen to, it affects us and we start to believe it and we start to feel it. So if you're around someone who's very self-confident and comfortable with who they are and they're a go-getter and they're, they're firm in what they're doing every day, when you're around them, you see what they're doing, you hear the words that they're talking and those things start to seep into you. So that's the very first thing. And just borrow it. You don't have to worry about trying to get it yourself. Just go hang around where that self-confidence is. Listen to the words they say. Watch what they do. And then as you continue to hang around that person, that stuff starts to seep into your skin and your consciousness. And you start to feel it and you start to mimic it. So 
first thing to do is just just go borrow it. Don't worry about trying to get your own. Just go borrow it from somebody else. Now, number two, and this is a very, very powerful technique, and I use this for all kinds of things. But this one is just use a question, the power of questions. And, you know, when you hang around me for a while, you're going to know that I'm a super, super believer in how powerful questions are. Why? Because anytime you ask a question, where even when you ask yourself, the mind is automatically programmed to try and find a good answer for you. So in this case, when you uh, the way you apply it in the case where you're confident, you need to pick up your confidence. What you should do is you take that statement, the one that seems to create a lot of trouble for you, and you ask this simple question. For example, you know, I read through and I've heard numerous stories of how a former spouse might say, you know, you're you know, you're hopeful, you're you're a loser, et cetera. So let's just take that when you're a loser, you'll never be anybody. So what you want to do is you want to take that statement and apply a question to it. And the question is this. Is that statement 100 percent true forever and always? And the reason why we use that question is because those types of situations, when someone says something like that about you, there's no way in the world that can be 100 percent true in all cases forever and ever and ever, because it just doesn't apply in that situation. So all you do is you ask yourself that question. Am I 100 percent certain forever and ever and ever without a doubt that I am a loser? And I can guarantee you the answer to that is no, because there have already been numerous instances in your life where that has not been the case, where you've been a winner, where you've done great things and you're going to still do great things in the, in the future. So all you do is question it, regardless of what that situation is. You apply that question to it. The answer is always no, because it can't be 100 percent sure, certain forever and ever and ever. So then you start to combat those things that are causing you problems. And if that doesn't start to turn your your emotions, your feelings about that statement, do it until it does. If it doesn't happen the first or second or third time, continue to do it. And then I'm guarantee you that one time when you do it, your brain is going to say, no, that's not true. And there is the magical moment. Because once your brain knows that it's not true, then you free yourself from whatever bondage that is that someone else tried to place on you and that you believed, you allowed yourself to believe. So take that question, ask that question over and over and over and over again until you get that no. And when you get that no, now the spell's broken. You're ready to rock and roll, start to build your confidence and let's move on and make this thing great. All right. That's all I got for you today. If anything in this episode served you. Listen to it more than one time. Share this podcast with people who you think it might serve as well. Check out some of the other episodes. Do me a favor. Go rate the show so we can get re get a reach out to more people. And most importantly, take these things and play with them. Use them. See if they work for you, because if you don't apply the techniques and you don't start to play with them, you don't start to do anything differently than you've done in the past. How can you expect things to get better? All right. So until tomorrow, take care of yourself. Do the best you can for yourself and your family and continue to move on toward your own personal post-divorce paradise because you deserve it. Take care, everybody. I'll talk with you again later. Bye now. You've been listening to the Divorce Happy and Successful Podcast. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Until next time, stay focused and keep moving forward.